here is the rule. Now, if this looks scary, um, I don't actually really use this formula. I just kind of do it, if you will. So just follow through my um, either the probability tree that I'm writing out, or I'll show you also how to do this in Excel afterwards. But let's just have a quick uh, look at the Bayes rule. So the Bayes rule here um, is where you want to flip, you have B given A, and you want to flip it to A given B, uh, where A is now kind of what's called our current event, and B is what already happened. So what we want, let's say somebody already has the disease or does not have the disease, we want the odds of them either testing positive or negative. What we had before, we had the odds of them actually having disease or not, and then testing positive or negative. That's not what we're looking for, if that makes any sense. Now what we need to do to do Bayes rule, basically, to get this probability of B on the bottom, we need to add up all the times where B occurs. So for us, that was all the times where we tested negative or all the times where we tested positive. Okay, but that's the rule. Again, I'm not going to pick through this formula too much. I'm just going to show you how to implement this rule. Okay, so let's have a look here at our um, probabilities that result um, from Bayes rule. Okay, so very first one here, ill given positive test. Okay, so ill given positive test. Well, to get that, what we actually do, uh, we go back to our, basically our Bayes rule, or if you will, if you remember this back from your um, stats review, for a conditional probability. Um, to calculate it here, forgive me, probability of A given B. Well, I like to think of this as a division line. It's kind of out of the odds of B, given that B has already happened, what are the odds of A also happening? So also and and are the same. So what are the odds, sorry, of A also happening given that B has already occurred or out of the times that B occurs, what are the odds of A also occurring? That is basically what we're gonna go get. Okay, so in the context of this one, our positive test is our B, our ill is our A, if that makes any sense, uh, or think of this as a division line. Um, so positive test goes on the bottom, and then on the top, we put the and. So what are the odds of somebody also being ill? So getting that positive test result and they're also ill. What are the odds of that? Well, we have both of those um, probabilities already. If you remember going back to our tree here, I'm just going to go back here. Um, so we have, um, in this case, um, so somebody is ill and they got a positive test result, that was this number right here. Okay, we had that on our tree. So let's go back and have a look at that. Ill and positive, that is that point zero zero seven seven six. Uh, and the odds of positive, we also went and got that. So odds of positive right here, we went and got, that was that point zero two seven six. Just divide those two numbers by each other. Basically what we're actually doing what, right now is Bayes rule but doing it kind of visually. We're organizing the probabilities to do Bayes rule, essentially. Um, so probability of ill given positive test result is the point 2812. Okay, do the same thing for the other uh, one. So a not ill and negative test, well, that's gonna be not ill, sorry, not ill given negative test. So we're gonna do not ill and negative divided by negative. Okay, again, think of that as a vision. Always put the and on the top. What are the odds of not ill as well? So we already have negative test result. What are the odds of them also not being ill? Okay, so the not ill and negative, let's just go back here. So not ill and negative, not ill, disease, no, and negative. Well, that's this point nine seven uh, two one six, And the odds of negative, we also calculated that's that point um, 9724, so we just put both of those into our formula. So we have the point 97216 and the uh, point 9724. Just divide them by each other and we get point 99975. This is actually what's called our true negative, so we're quite accurate. Um, if there's a negative test result given out, it's fairly accurate. Okay, two more to look at here, just to keep going and look at all of the possible ones. So ill given negative test, so that's ill and negative on the top, divided by negative on the bottom. 
odds of negative. Again, we have that 0.9724. Il and negative was 0 0.00024. Divide those by each other, we get 0 0.0002468. And that is our false negative. Somebody is ill, but they got given a negative test result. So these are the people that are going to go undiagnosed if we only did one test on them. So they have the disease, something's wrong with them. They go to the doctor, they go, hey, I have something wrong with me. I know I do. And the doctor says, well, let's do this test on you. Well, guess what? That test turns out um, to say they don't have the disease when they really do have it. So they go undiagnosed if they just did the one test. Finally, the last bad scenario, which might scare people, let's say they come into the doctor, they get the test, or if you will, let's say if you're giving blood and um, you, uh, you get tested and um, Canadian Blood Services phones you and says, hey, you have this disease, you need to come in, or you, they probably say direct you to your doctor uh, when you don't actually have it. So this would be this positive test result, which would scare you for sure. So this is the, uh, you're not actually ill, but you get given a positive test result. It's called your false positive. Um, okay, so let's have a look here. So you do your not ill and positive divided by the odds of positive. And again, you get these, um, you get the not ill and positive off of your tree, and it turns out to be the following. Let's just have a look here. Um, 0 0.01984, the odds of testing positive, 0.0276. This is a very high number. So what are the odds of somebody without a disease being told that they have it? Um, especially for those who don't feel ill, let's say they go in, they give blood, and they get told that they actually have a disease that they don't have. Uh, the odds are 71.88%. Um, okay, and again, that is your false positive. How do they mitigate this? Well, like we say, in any case, increase your sample size. So they do this test more than once. Um, so they don't just run it once on the blood work because this is a surprisingly high uh, false positive result that can happen. Okay, so overall results, there's a 28% chance someone who tests positive actually has the disease, a 71.88% chance somebody who tests positive does not have the disease, that's our false positive, 99.9% .9 chance that somebody who tests negative does not have the disease, and a 0.02% chance someone who tests negative has the disease. So the negative is actually much more correct than the positive for this test.